I mean, there's many different direct paths, angles, gateways, and sometimes they'll share something that's more, has, has some separation elements in it. Like, I'm not this, I'm not that. And I've personally found that I am not this, I'm not that approach to be highly effective, All right? But sometimes making these distinctions, it sounds like we're saying, uh, like there's a, a truth and there's a non-truth, or there's a, a reality and there's an illusion, or there is a, a right and a wrong almost, spiritually speaking, or correct and incorrect. Um, but really, just see the separation as a way into unity. And I'll explain a little bit what I mean by that. The thing is, unity is simply the state of existence, the state of life as it is. There's no way around it. There's no way to argue with it. There is only one. So no practice can undo that. You've been conditioned by all the elements that you've associated with for all your life, all the filters, all the objects that you filtered your sense of existence, your sense of being through, that has produced the illusory feeling or the feeling of the illusion of separation being real. And it doesn't really matter what you do at this point when this is already the case, when you already feel separation, when you believe in separation, then you know, it doesn't really matter whether you practice unity or separation. Um, and also it doesn't matter from the point of view of not being able to change the actual structure of reality, which is unity. So you can practice all kinds of separations, seemingly separation inducing practices, and it wouldn't make any difference in the unity, in the oneness, in the one that this all is appearing as. So. Ultimately, the Absolute One is realized and greater and greater unity is experienced and felt through, for example, the practice of separating yourself out from everything that you can experience. Right now, this self, uh, let's say true self, they're just words, but let's say the true self, or you can call it mind space, or you can call it awareness, you can call it being, you can call it I am, you can call it that which you are, whatever that is. Right now, that has been infiltrated. It has collapsed itself around form, and form exists within the dream of imagination, within labels, within concepts, within descriptions. It has therefore spatial elements, temporal elements, and because the true self, which is absolute, one, formless, infinite, indescribable, free, freer than space, but in some senses it's like space, but it's even freer than space itself. You are even freer than space itself. That which you are, total unity, has been infiltrated by thoughts, sense perceptions, stories, names, filters, spatial and temporal realities or dimensional experiences and you've been associating with those elements for so long that it has become challenging for most of us to kind of in a sense keep a quiet empty clear mind that is transparent to the natural state of this formless space-like but truly ultimately beyond space existence awareness being self and so, again, you can't really separate anything out from anything. That's just more illusion. So it doesn't really matter. You've lived your whole life in illusion. So don't worry about trying to mimic unity in your spiritual practices when there's very effective spiritual practices, very direct spiritual practices available to you that can actually tangibly, pragmatically give you direct experience of oneness. But the practice sounds like separation. And in many ways, this does mimic politics, like not being able to see past the surface, thinking we choose for unity, but really choosing separation, and thinking that that which brings unity is bringing separation. So it's, it's a little related, but I won't go into that now. I'm enjoying my retreat too much. And so, to separate oneself out completely 
from the entire universe, the entire landscape of experience, the entire realm of consciousness, final separation, ultimate separation, is ironically realization of the absolute infinite unity. So if we take this natural, original, primordial space of what you are, this for now let's call it awareness, it doesn't matter. Ultimately it's beyond even what we would call of, what we would think of as awareness, but the term does a good job at getting pretty close to infinite reality. Because awareness cannot be found to be anything, right? This is not awareness. This is not awareness. This is not awareness. I can't find it in my brain. It's this intangible, formless, space-like quality of, I know, of knowing, pure knowing, of being, knowing, being, knowing, being, knowing, knowing, being, being, knowing. So you can't put your finger on it. You can't grasp it. You can't catch it. You can't kill it. It endures. It continues. It doesn't matter what appears. It just endures. It continues. Every appearance inseparably appears from it. But again, it has become associated, it has become collapsed, it has blended together with ideas that have appeared within this awareness, you could say, or alongside this, with this awareness. And if we start separating from these concepts one by one, so let's say I'm triggered about something, and I investigate, okay, I'm triggered about the situation, this person said something to me, and it, it gave me an emotional response perfectly fine just accept it but then investigate okay I have this trigger what must I believe is true what must I believe I am what must I have identified and associated with to be offended by vibrations in what appears to be air hitting my eardrum A person could have said the same thing if I was deaf I would not be triggered the same thing happened but I did not internalize it, I did not hear it, I did not perceive it, I did not interpret it, I did not give it meaning, I did not pass it through my filters of associating awareness with form, with ideas, with concept. And if I find the concept, and usually it's multi-layered, multi-faceted, because we're conditioned in several ways, but I can find things like, oh, I thought I was the body, I'm assuming I've associated with the body, and I've associated with being a personality inside this body, that I, I have to use this body to represent that personality, that truth that I feel is true. And I have to go out there in the world, and this is who I am. I have associated with this form, spatially, temporally, ideology-wise, thought-wise, belief-wise. And so it makes sense that I'm triggered because I, awareness, has associated itself with the body. Just one example. And the body is the culprit for most triggers and most experiences that feel personalized. For most of our delusions, the root of it is like the feeling that I am the body, the belief that I'm the body. Now, if we could take this awareness, this beingness, this knowingness, this pure space of knowing, and we could detach it from perceptions, from sensations, from thoughts, from ideas, from memories, so we could actually separate awareness from what it's appearing, what it's seeing, what it's sensing, perceiving, thinking, sense organs, and so forth. Then we could have a more direct experience of that awareness. That awareness, in a sense, would be purified and 